16-bit 74LS181-AS881 TTL Reduced Instruction Set Computer System Architecture. This video is brought to you by USB NES. Shift your bits with USB NES. Shout out to the Usagi Electric Channel and their excellent series on how to build a vacuum tube computer, and especially its companion series on building a Motorola MC145000 one bit digital computer. As a kid flipping through these pages of the Motorola CMOS Logic data book, I'd sometimes glance at the MC145000 and wondered what the heck you could do with it, since it's just one bit and the data book only offered a brief explanation of applications and too few examples to really know what to do with it. Thanks again for making these great technical do-it-yourself videos. The 16-bit LS181-AS881 TTL computer is an entirely new, original concept, 16-bit microcomputer architecture standard documented in this video that is based off mostly common TTL parts. As there is a sea of TTL parts to navigate through that have seemingly useless application on the surface level, there is a way to organize together a larger function-specific group of these chips to build a pretty decent and capable 16-bit computer system with opportunity for expansion on both the physical front and architectural as well. Please note the computer design described in this video is currently just conceptual. It is untested and intended for educational or entertainment purposes only. The goals of the LS181-AS881 TTL computer are using LEDs to show the status of as many internal CPU system lines as possible, such as other learner computer kits on the market, mostly for amusement, but also for debugging. Enable a way for users to stop and single step the CPU. Use front panel switches to program the computer in a pinch. Offer efficient multiplication and division instruction slices. Run a TTL friendly bus speeds and offer parallel IO breakout headers for easy peripheral Raspberry Pi and Arduino project access, and eventually develop a printed circuit board and supply kits to hobbyists and electronic educators for purchase. Here we see a bird's eye view of the entire computer system. The main functioning parts here are one megabyte ROM BIOS flash, one to three megabytes level one cache RAM, 12 megahertz system clock generator and push button debounce clock select jumpers, eight element CPU register stack, 16 function carry generator, 181 slash 881 32 function arithmetic logic unit, twin shift registers R7 and B, quad bus multiplexer, 5 bit flags register, address register A, 74LS612 memory mapper and system boot flip flop, boot mode jumpers, 5 bit direct decode control bus, 19-bit address bus, 16-bit data bus, 8 system expansion headers, 16 console push button switches, 4 system control push button switches, 8 dedicated interrupt request lines, interrupt microprogram and instruction fetch sequencer, instruction word register, instruction decoders, and 208 console status LEDs. 1 megabyte ROM BIOS flash. This full speed 8 bit flash memory is a popular type that is widely available and uses a standard flash sequence inf interface for programming. The largest size is 512 kilobytes, doubled up to provide a 16 bit bus and up to 1 megabyte of system ROM BIOS. 1 to 3 megabytes level 1 cache RAM. 
This 55 nanosecond 8-bit RAM runs at the system clock and effectively functions as a level 1 cache. The chips are used in pairs to provide a 16-bit bus to the system and up to 3 megabytes of this level 1 cache may be installed. 12 megahertz system clock generator and push button debounce clock select jumpers. The clock generator circuit, consisting mostly of a crystal oscillator and clock divider, is the source of both the 12 MHz high-speed system clock and also the low-frequency debouncing clock used for debouncing the console push-button switches. The HEF4521 CMOS logic chip contains a 24-stage divider to reduce the 12 MHz signal down to frequency suitable for debouncing, 6, 11, 23, and 46 samples a second are possible sample rates set by a jumper block on the system board. 8-element CPU register stack. The CPU register stack is made up of 8 pairs of SEM4F825 8-bit register chips, constituting of program counter R0, stack pointer R1, registers R2 to R6, and an address decoder just called A. The reason these specific register chips are used in the computer here is because they offer a direct reset, clock enable, and three output select lines. Having the three output select lines allows up to eight of these chips to be multiplexed together without the need for any extra decoding logic. This makes them suitable to drive the address bus on the same clock cycle as the instruction decode with minimal added propagation delays. The reset lines are useful for initializing the program counter and other registers to zero on reset. Address 0000, 0000 is where the reset vector starts in the ROM BIOS. 16 Function Carry Generator there are special instructions on the processor to inject the status of several system flags as the carry input to the arithmetic logic unit. This allows these flags to be easily used in arithmetic logic unit calculations. Moreover, it is a convenient way to extend the status of these flags into the contents of an entire 16-bit register for parallel masking operations. ls one slash as 88132 function arithmetic logic unit. These classic TTL ALUs contain not only every possible logic function of two terms in its instruction set, but also contain enough arithmetic modes to be useful for add, subtract, increment, decrement, left shift and rotate operations, and a carry in operation. These AS881 ALUs contain additional circuitry for calculating the minus one result of a logic operation through the carry and allows the carry in to be used for cascading multi-word tests for minus one. Zero detect. Unfortunately, the LS181 slash AS881 ALU design is optimized for processing negative logic. When using positive logic, the equals output on the chip does not actually detect a zero result from the function, but rather minus one. To provide a proper zero result detection flag to the system, we are using a 74ALS677 chip, a versatile address decoder chip configured to provide the zero result detection for the flags. Twin shift registers R7 and B. In order to implement an efficient way of doing iterative multiplication and division operations, the system also provides an additional two registers, B and R7, which can be shifted left or right, and can also be cascaded for multi-word shifts. Using the LU in tandem with the double shift instructions allows up to 48 bits to be shifted in one instruction. Quad Bus Multiplexer this four input data multiplexer provides the pathway switching required to implement the most useful instructions for the computer. Five bit flags register. The system has a five bit flags register. 
carry flag, sign flag, zero flag, minus one flag, and an IRQ enable flag. The carry and minus one flags always come off the output of the ALU, while the sign flag comes off bit 15 of the ALU function result, and zero flag as previously mentioned. The IRQ enable flag is used to prevent interrupt requests from hardware from interrupting the processor. This flag is cleared on reset. 74LS612 Memory Mapper and System Boot Flip Flop. This memory mapper chip has 16 internal registers of 12 bits each, and divide the 16 bit system memory map into 16 by 4 kilobyte banks that may map any RAM, ROM, or system I.O. resources as the system sees fit. Moreover, the memory mapper expands the system's addressing capabilities up to 5 megabytes when configured for using the direct decode mode, and up to 32 megabytes when additional decoders are used by the system expansion hardware. On reset, the memory mapper is disabled and needs to be programmed before any other system resources become available. A one clock cycle CPU wait state is generated when writing to the LS612 registers to insert a full cycle strobe pulse within a two clock cycle period to satisfy the LS612 timing requirements. Boot mode jumpers. Before programming the LS612 memory mapper chip after reset, the boot mode jumpers select the default memory to be used to boot the system. In general, this should be set to ROM BIOS memory, although RAM and expansion I.O. can be selected as well. If no memory device is selected for boot at all, the system will use the 16 front panel switches as boot memory. This experimental setting is only useful in the single step DC clocking mode for atomically feeding the CPU instructions one 16 bit word at a time. 5-bit direct decode control bus. To use the direct decode function of the system memory mapper, the most significant 5 bits of the map data decode to RAM, ROM, or I.O. resources directly by clearing one of these bits while keeping the rest at logic level 1. 19-bit address bus. Each direct decode resource has its own 19-bit address space. With a 16-bit bus, this equates to 1 megabyte. 16-bit data bus. The system has a 16-bit wide data path directly coupled with the A, B flags and opcode register, memory mapper and IRQ priority registers, as well as the expansion headers. 8 system expansion headers. Each expansion header has access to a 19-bit address bus, 5-bit direct decode bus, 16-bit data bus, non-maskable and discrete IRQ inputs, system wait line, read-write control, and propagation matched memory clocking lines. The IRQ priority designation here is a function of the expansion header used by the hardware making the interrupt request. 16 console push button switches. These mechanical toggle switches can be mapped into the CPU by setting all 12 bits of a memory mapper register to logic level 1. 4 system control push button switches. These system configuration switches control the CPU reset input, manual non maskable interrupt trigger, single step and variable clock speed modes as well as the 12 MHz full speed mode. Interrupt microprogram and instruction fetch sequencer. Whenever an interrupt request, non-maskable interrupt, or breakpoint instruction is executed, the processor stops what it's doing in the main program and executes a microprogram which pushes the B flags, program counter, and A registers to the stack while fetching the system call vector at FFFF. From the system call, the RQ priority can be analyzed by reading from the memory map report to determine the level of the RQ, if any, or whether a non maskable interrupt or breakpoint occurred. The breakpoint and non maskable interrupt will push the flags to the stack and then clear the IRQ enable flag, while IRQs do not alter the IRQ enable flag 
Instead, when an IRQ is detected, the IRQ input lines are all latched until the flags register is written to again with the IRQ enable flag set, typically done in the return from interrupt code sequence. Any pending IRQs will be processed after the return from interrupt sequence, while a non-maskable interrupt can be triggered at any time with a negative edge line transition on the non-maskable interrupt open drain input. Instruction word register. Instruction words are 16 bits each and take just two clock cycles to execute, though instructions writing to the LS612 registers take three cycles. They are organized as 4-bit bus code, 1-bit carry mode, and 3-bit operand select, 5-bit ALU function code, and 3-bit address register select, which is the A input of the ALU. The bus codes are responsible for establishing the data bus path and instruction mode of the CPU. The ALU flags are only updated when using certain bus codes while the IRQ enable flag can only be updated when loading the flag's register from memory. Note that an extra optional chip is present here for increasing the line current for ALU functions lines 0 to 3 when using the AS881 ALUs. Instruction decoders. The 74F139 and 74F154 chips are used to mostly decode the bus modes of the CPU, and provide the discrete control lines used to switch different parts of the CPU on and off. Moreover, the SEM4F538 parts are used to decode the CPU register to update with the ALU result of the instruction. Multiply and divide instruction slices. The processor has two specific instruction types for performing an iterative 16-bit multiply or divide calculation using inlined instructions. Moreover, the division and multiplication functions are a subset of the conditional store instruction group, where the execute cycle will determine the condition to store the result of the AOU to the B register with, and subsequently shift the B and R7 registers accordingly, while simultaneously fetching the next instruction opcode. This allows a 16-bit calculation to be done using 16 back-to-back -back multiplier divide instructions and some setup code that may cascade multiple 16-bit multiplier divide results together for multi-word calculations. 208 console status LEDs. In the single-step clocking and variable speed clock modes, these front panel LEDs provide the status of virtually every relevant bit line in the computer for the aid of programming, debugging, learning, or just providing an entertaining LED display for others to casually enjoy as a background showpiece. Conclusion In this video, we covered the basic architecture of the LS181 slash AS881 16-bit TTL computer. Based on the reception of this video, I may follow up with a PCB design for the computer and then with actually building and testing it and releasing the project with a complete bill of materials on GitHub. Thanks for watching.